morning and welcome to the 2012 commencement ceremonies at Morgan State University. We are very pleased to have all of you with us this morning here in Hughes Stadium. And of course, very pleased to have all of you join us around the world as this ceremony is being streamed live via the World Wide Web. I am now pleased to present to you Mr. Dallas R. Evans, Chairman of the Morgan State University Board of Regents, who will bring greetings on behalf of the board. Good morning. What a great day for the class of 2012. <laughs> to my fellow regents, Mr. President, Madam Speaker, the graduating class of 2012, ladies and gentlemen, again, good morning. It is my pleasure to bring greetings from the Board of Regents of Morgan State University as we close another successful academic year and send forth yet another class of Morgan graduates. Commencement is always a joyous occasion for this university, and it is a moment of great triumph and achievement for our students. It is a time when, in spite of all the challenges that you might have faced over the past few years, you can look back and say it was all worthwhile. The hard work, the sacrifice, the sleepless nights, the anxiety before examinations, and the never-ending deadline for papers, as well as the excitement and pleasure of discovering more and more about the world around you and about yourselves and your great potential to succeed. This is the moment for which our graduates have worked so hard and which they have been anxiously waiting. And the Board of Regents is very excited to be a part of this celebration as you have reached your goal. Ladies and gentlemen, Morgan State University is very privileged this morning and extremely honored to have as our commencement speaker one of the world's most accomplished and visionary scientists, and one of the most outstanding leaders in higher education in America today. Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson is the 18th president of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in Troy, New York, and Hartford, Connecticut, the oldest technological university in the United States. Dr. Jackson holds a BS degree in physics and a PhD in theoretical elementary particle physics from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. She has been president of Rensselaer since 1999 and has led that institution to a high level of distinction. In April 2009, President Barack Obama appointed Dr. Jackson to serve on the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology a group of this nation's leading scientists and engineers who offer advice to the president and the vice president on science and technology issues. Prior to her becoming president at Rensselaer, Dr. Jackson was a theoretical physicist conducting basic research at the former AT&T Bell Laboratories and a professor of theoretical physics at Rutgers University. Indeed, in 1995, then-President Bill Clinton appointed her to serve as chairman of the United States Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Dr. Jackson holds membership in a number of organizations, among them the National Academy of Engineering, the American Philosophical Society, the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, the American Physical Society, and the American Association for the Advancement of Science. She also serves on several corporate boards across America. She chairs the New York Stock Exchange Regulation Board. She serves on the boards of directors of IBM, of FedEx, of Marathon Oil, of Medtronic, and Public Service Enterprise Group. She also sits on the boards of the Smithsonian Institution and the Council on Foreign Relations and the Brookings Institution. Quite frankly, Dr. Jackson, I don't know when you ever have time to sleep. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, President Shirley Ann Jackson 
has established a new benchmark in leadership in science in this world. And indeed, she has established a benchmark in higher education and has established herself as one of the truly great college presidents of the modern era. And so, ladies and gentlemen, and members of the class of 2012, I am very honored this morning to bring to you Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson, and please join me in giving her a warm Morgan round of applause. Dr. Jackson. Good morning. I offer my warm greetings to the President, the Cabinet, the Board of Regents, the faculty and staff of Morgan State University, distinguished guests, families, friends, and most especially, the great class of 2012. <laughs> Graduates, it is an honor to speak with you on this day, your day. You have taken on challenging academic programs at a university with a tradition of excellence, and you have achieved your goals. I can see in the audience, parents, other family members, faculty and friends who have supported you along the way and now share your deep pride of accomplishment. Well done. The title of my remarks today is Emergence of the New. The title comes from a commencement speech full of wisdom and poetry, poetry I don't have, delivered here over 50 years ago in 1958 by the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. One might wonder why Dr. King gave that speech, a major speech here at Morgan State, which included inspiration he later used in his famous I Have a Dream speech at the Lincoln Memorial as part of the March on Washington five years later in 1963. Given who he was, Dr. King would have known about the African American leaders who studied and worked here. Since Dr. King was a minister, he also may have been drawn by the origins of Morgan State to train students for the ministry. But I suspect that he saw the graduates of Morgan as a cohort of thoughtful, industrious, and educated men and women who were prepared to participate in the struggle for civil rights, indeed for global human rights, in the decades to come. So before me today is a similar cohort, you, thoughtful, industrious, educated, and prepared. You are faced with the challenges of your own time. Now even though we do not need to look hard to find bad news, I believe we have opportunities in front of us for greater health, prosperity, and understanding for all. Listen to what Dr. King said in 1958, quote, Whenever we confront the emergence of the new, there is the recalcitrance of the old. And so tensions which we witness in the world today are indicative of the fact that a new world is coming into being and an old world is passing away. That was his quote. Today, we live in a world for all its wonders that also is full of pain, discontent, and conflict, much like the turbulent world of 1958. And we would do well to remember that new possibilities for freedom and progress may emerge from such a world. But freedom and progress do not just happen. Two things must be in place, a catalyst for change and the determination of committed people. According to Dr. King, the catalysts for change in his era were, and I quote, the automobile, two world wars, and the Great Depression, his quote. In other words, technological advancement, conflict, and economic insecurity. Dr. King also noted that, quote, there comes a time when people get tired of being trampled over by the iron feet of oppression, unquote. Now, these factors taken together caused African Americans then to take a new look at themselves and the world and to demand an end to discrimination and to commit to bringing that about. Out of this came the civil rights struggle and the end of many unfair and unethical laws and practices in this country. Today, we are continually faced with technological advancement, conflict, and economic insecurity, with people worldwide getting tired, tired of oppression, poverty, 
and indignity. As a consequence, we are seeing the global equivalent of the civil rights struggle, where, for example, the internet and social networks have catalyzed the Arab Spring, a quest for dignity and freedom across North Africa and the Middle East. We can expect new and emerging technologies to continue to be catalysts for change because they are creating at an accelerating pace that network of inescapable mutuality of which Dr. King spoke so many years ago, where what affects one affects all. And whether we are talking about climate change, natural disasters, energy security, diseases without borders and global health, poverty, or global financial system vulnerabilities. Given the pace of scientific discovery and technological innovation, and that's what I'm about, such catalysts will disrupt our culture more often in the future than they have in the past. But let me tell you, technology alone will not suffice to bring the changes needed to meet the grand challenges of these times. Dr. King says, and I quote again, man through his scientific genius has been able to make of this world a neighborhood. If we are to survive, we must make of it a brotherhood and a sisterhood. We must learn to live together as brothers or we will die together as fools, a quote. But this is where you come in. You are moving into careers and further study that will demand much of you, and you are mer merging into an ever more interconnected world that is facing unprecedented challenges in energy, environment, social justice, and economics. Our world is in great need of your knowledge, talent, and creativity, your commitment. And you have a special role to play as graduates of Maryland's public urban university, because most of the world's population today lives in cities. As you look for solutions, you have knowledge and perspectives that are tied especially closely to needs in both emerging and developed countries. In the years ahead, science and technology and other catalysts of change will create significant opportunities for you to use your capabilities to make the world a better place. They will open doors for you as they open doors for innovative ideas, answers, and progress. So step through the door that opens for you. Step through your window in time. I did. My life changed because of the confluence of two events, the Brown versus Board of Education Supreme Court decision in 1954 that desegregated public schools and the Soviet launch of the Sputnik 1 satellite in 1954. Now these, 1957, now these events led to the conjoining of two forces that then changed my life. First, a national almost obsessive focus on a science-based space and defense race with the Soviets and the development of scientific talent to meet that challenge through strengthened science and math educational programs from primary school through to advanced study. And second, the opening of opportunities for people like me, like you, that never existed before. So I stepped through my window in time. I ended up in an accelerated academic program in Washington, D.C., which allowed me to finish high school college prep courses by the end of the 11th grade. I then took what are today's AP, as well as college level courses in the 12th grade. I was my high school valedictorian, and I went off to MIT for college. The rest, as they say, is history. But not quite. Why? The road was not paved for me. There was no red carpet. I had to figure out my path, my trajectory, as it were. There were pitfalls, traps, barriers, naysayers, and temptations, especially temptations to give up along the way, especially when told by a professor that colored girls should learn a trade. Colored girls should learn a trade. So I did learn a trade, mm -hmm. physics. Mm -hmm. And I quickly, thank you. And I quickly realized that one has to have the focus, stamina, vision, courage, 
and confidence to face and surmount all these things and to stay focused on excellence even in the face of doubt, including self-doubt, and not to give up on other people. You will walk through your doors, but you will not and cannot go through them alone. Our world and the challenges we face are complex and require more than the knowledge and experience of individuals, no matter how capable. Your ability to take determined action will depend on all that you have learned and all you can do. But it also will depend on your ability to engage with other people who have the knowledge, perspectives, and judgment you will need to create the best outcomes for yourself and others. More and more, the answers that are required and opportunities will come from people you work with who come from unlikely places and bring expertise from unexpected arenas. Respect them. And because you came to this university, you have developed the ability to reach across differences in cultures, values, points of view, knowledge, and concerns. This capability will serve you well and enable you to create ever more large and powerful networks of intelligent, concerned, and caring people in the years to come. And that will be long after you have forgotten historical facts and scientific equations. And as with every other person of outstanding ability, you will find that your ideals and values will be challenged. You may be tempted at times to use those talents in ways that may be more profitable or require less work, but do not meet your standards. You may have moments of self-doubt. On occasion, you may stumble. But if you do, just pick yourselves up. Remember what you expect of yourselves and go back to doing the work you're meant to do. Now, those of you who are search engine scholars will know that Dr. King ended his commencement remarks with a message of hope, where he encouraged the graduates to let freedom ring from every corner of the nation. In 1958, those graduates of Morgan State took his message to heart and took a step into the future before many others. Now, you have taken many steps, but still have many to take. And you surely will face the recalcitrance of the old as you endeavor to move forward. But comfort does not lead to progress. But take all that you are and all that you have and give back to society in ways that will honor Morgan State and those who have loved and supported you along the way. Look forward, not back. Look up, not down. Have confidence in yourselves. Take care of yourselves and your families. And if you are ever feeling tired, discouraged, or just plain disgusted, think of the bridges you already have crossed, the mountains you already have climbed. Do not let others set your aspirations for you. Set them for yourselves. Intend to make a difference in this world in ways large and small, and you will, and the world will be a better place for it. I wish you success, joy, prosperity, and peace. Good luck, congratulations, and Godspeed. Thank you. The honorary degrees will now be conferred, and I call once again Chairman Dallas Evans to the podium. Mr. President, Board of Regents of Morgan State University hereby authorizes you to confer upon Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson honorary degree in recognition of her notable achievements. Proclaimed by Time Magazine in 2005 as the ultimate role model for women in science, Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson has been, for nearly four decades, one of the world's outstanding scientists and one of its most prominent educational leaders. Always the pioneer and constantly on the cutting edge of change and progress, she has been both torchbearer and beacon, pathfinder and pace setter in scientific research, in industry, in government, and in academe. The first African American woman to earn the doctorate from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, the first African American and the first woman to chair the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission and the first African-American woman to lead a top 50 national research university. 
Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson has become a prototype for achievement in science and research and an icon for effective and visionary leadership in higher education. Today she stands once again as a pioneer, as the first woman and the first African American to be appointed president of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in New York. From that lofty plateau, she has for the past 13 years engineered and guided the Rensselaer Plan, which has brought about extraordinary transformation of the Institute. She is the standard bearer for women, minorities, and educators throughout the world. Mr. President, for her distinguished career as scientist and public servant, for her effective leadership of one of the nation's prestigious institutions of higher learning, and for her excellent example, I am pleased to present to you Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson, President of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, to receive at your hands the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents of Morgan State University, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Science with all the rights, privileges, duties, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. Mr. President, the Board of Regents of Morgan State University hereby authorizes you to confer upon Mr. Larry Gibson an honorary degree in recognition of his notable achievements. Mr. President, for nearly a half century, Larry Gibson has been a guardian of public law, a champion of human rights, and a major shaper of the next generation of America's legal minds. He has devoted his professional life to protecting the common good, defending the rights of the misrepresented and misunderstood, ensuring the integrity of and participation in the electoral process, and deconstructing and reconstructing local and national civil rights history. The first African-American law professor at the University of Virginia, Larry Gibson has continually been a benchmark for excellence and achievement in the practice of law, in political campaign organization, in the pedagogy of the law, and in the preservation and protection of the records of human history and achievement. Currently professor of law at the University of Maryland, Larry Gibson has played a major role in uncovering the story of Morgan State College students who established in the 40s and 50s the tradition of marches and sit-ins that was to place its stamp on the civil rights movement in the 60s. Professor Larry Gibson is a man for all seasons, in the law and in education, in Baltimore, Maryland, the nation, and the world. Mr. President, for his distinguished career as barrister, educator, and historian, for his pivotal role in rewriting American history and positioning Morgan in the forefront and at the heart of the American Civil Rights Movement, and for his excellent example, I am pleased to present to you Larry Gibson, Professor of Law at the University of Maryland, to receive at your hands the degree Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Professor Larry Gibson, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents of Morgan State University, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Laws with all the rights, privileges, duties, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. Mr. President, since graduating from Morgan in 1978, Her Excellency Tebelelo Mazile Seretsi has become, over the last three decades, a prodigious force in the economy and the political life of Botswana, and a guiding light in international trade and diplomacy. She has distinguished herself in the private sector and in government service in Botswana as one of the 10 most influential women in the political life and as one of its top finance managers. In 2011, she was appointed ambassador of Botswana to the United States of America, and from that stately position, she has been a strong advocate of Botswana's progressive policies on tolerance, private property rights, social justice, business development, and human capital. 
and one of its chief <coughs> advocates for educational development and for promoting ties with institutions of higher education in the United States, including her alma mater. She is one of the driving forces behind the developing partnership between Morgan and higher education in Botswana. Ambassador Soretsi is an alumna of whom the university is proud and an international diplomat in whose achievements it takes great pride and satisfaction. Mr. President, for her distinguished career as barrister, businesswoman, political leader, and international diplomat, for her pivotal role in promoting educational partnership with American universities, especially Morgan, and for her superb example, I am pleased to present to you Her Excellency Tebelelo Mazile Soretsi, Ambassador of Botswana to the United States, to receive at your hands the degree Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents of Morgan State University, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Laws with all the rights, privileges, duties, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. All candidates for the degree Doctor of Philosophy, please rise. All candidates for the degree Doctor of Education, please rise. Doctor of Engineering, please rise. Doctor of Public Health, please rise. Mr. President, I am honored to present the candidates who have qualified in all respects for the degrees Doctor of Philosophy, Doctor of Education, Doctor of Engineering, and Doctor of Public Health. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Morgan State University Board of Regents, I now confer upon you in mass the degrees Doctor of Philosophy, Doctor of Education, Doctor of Engineering, and Doctor of Public Health with all the rights, privileges, duties, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. Master of Architecture, please rise. Mr. President, I have the privilege of presenting those candidates who have qualified in all respects for the degree Master of Architecture. All candidates for the degree Master of Arts, please rise. Mr. President, I have the privilege of presenting those candidates who have qualified in all respects for the degree Master of Arts. All candidates for the degree Master of Arts in Teaching, please rise. Mr. President, I have the privilege of presenting those candidates who have qualified in all respects for the degree Master of Arts in Teaching. All candidates for the degree Master of Business Administration, please rise. Mr. President, I have the privilege of presenting those candidates who have qualified in all respects for the degree Master of Business Administration. All candidates for the degree <coughs> Master of City and Regional Planning, please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, I have the privilege of presenting those candidates who have qualified in all respects for the degree Master of City and Regional Planning. All candidates for the degree Master of Engineering, please rise. Mr. President, I have the privilege of presenting those candidates who have qualified in all respects for the degree Master of Engineering. All candidates for the degree Master of Landscape Architecture, please rise. Mr. President, I have the privilege of presenting those candidates who have qualified in all respects for the degree Master of Landscape Architecture. All candidates for the degree Master of Public Health, please rise. Mr. President, I have the privilege of presenting those candidates who have qualified in all respects for the degree Master of Public Health. <coughs> all candidates for the degree Master of Science, please rise. Mr. President, I have the privilege of presenting the candidates who have qualified in all respects for the degree Master of Science. All candidates for the degree Master of Science in Nursing, please rise. 
Mr. President, I have the privilege of presenting the candidates who have qualified in all respects for the degree Master of Science in Nursing. All candidates for the degree Master of Social Work, please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, I have the privilege of presenting the candidates who have qualified in all respects for the degree Master of Social Work. All candidates for the degrees Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science in the College of Liberal Arts, please rise. All candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science in the School of Architecture and Planning, please rise. All candidates for the Bachelor degree of Science in Business, please rise. Will all candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science in the School of Education and Urban Studies please stand? Would all candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science in the School of Engineering please rise? All candidates for the degree Bachelor of Social Work in the School of Social Work please rise. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Morgan State University Board of Regents, I do hereby confer upon you in mass the degrees Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science with all the rights, privileges, duties, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations, class of 2012. We orchestrate the direction of our generation. We are the hands of the future. We rise above all and see success. We are the class of 2012. It takes a visionary to predict success, but among everything else, it takes a Morganite to make it happen. Welcome faculty, staff, esteemed guests, dignitaries, friends, and family to the Morgan State University class of 2012. When we matriculated into Morgan State University, we did not know what to expect. Thinking back, there is nothing our parents, advisors, or mentors could have said to predict our experience. Our experience was what it should have been, spontaneous and unpredictable. The little things that we weren't warned about is what remains near and dear to our hearts today. All graduates, please rise. Please repeat after me. I hereby solemnly pledge unbroken allegiance to Alma Mata in appreciation for opportunities for development afforded me as a student at Morgan State University. I pledge active membership in the National Alumni Association wherever I may be through association with fellow alumni I shall ever do my best <clears throat> to uphold the ideals and tradition of Alma Mata. I pledge at a, as a citizen to exemplify the high ideals thus implied, rendering positive service to community state and nation, and so to live as ever to bring honor and respect to Alma Mata. Congratulations. Congratulations to Mr. Harvey and congratulations to our new alumni of Morgan State University.